a blessed day to our campus leaders. And I would like to thank God for the life of Pastor Cesar and Pastor Claudia Castellanos together with Bishop Oriel and Pastora Geraldine and the whole of the national team for allowing me to speak over the campus revolutionaries. Isa pong privilege ito. And I, I pray that everything that will come out of my mouth, they will come from the heart of the Father for this generation. Now, I have a very important question, and I believe na marami pong nagtatanong sa inyo nito. May need ba si Lord? Meron ba siyang kailangan? Kailangan ka ba niya? Meron ba siyang material na bagay na kailangan? In this particular story that I'm gonna share to you, makikita natin ang sagot sa katana, katanungan na yan. Let me go in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 9. And as I read it, I want you to enter into the story, okay? Campus Revolutionaries, I believe that this message will change your perspective in terms of the Word of God. Ang sabi po dito sa verse 1, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples. So nagpadala siya ng dalawang disipulo, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there. Meron daw asno with her colt by her. Yung pong kanyang anak, ano? Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, says the Lord needs them. So, kailangan sila ng Panginoon. Now, I'm answering your question. And He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey. And on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Verse 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This is a very powerful story kasi nakita ko dito na may kailangan pala si Lord. Ang sabi po ng verse 3 ng Matthew 21, If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, ito yung sasabihin nyo, sabi niya sa mga disipulo niya, the Lord has need of them. Everybody say the word, the Lord has need of them. Yes. And immediately, He will send them. It is a very interesting verse because there is nowhere in the Bible na makikita natin that God ever have a need. In other words, the Lord doesn't have a need. Nakita ko yan, mga kapatid, sa Acts 17. Verse 25. Ito talagang matindi ang verse na ito. Ang sabi dito sa 25th verse, And human hands can't serve His needs, for He has no needs. He Himself gives life and breath to everything, and He satisfies every need. And yet, sa book of Matthew, 21, ang sinasabi dito, God needs something. May kailangan ng Panginoon. I need something outside myself. So in other words, ang nakita ko dito sa scripture na ito, the Lord needs the next generation. Ang mga youth, kailangan kayo ng Panginoon. Ang mga campus revolutionaries, our leaders in the campus, the Lord needs you outside his, Himself. Because sabi niya, sabihin mo, kailangan ko ang asdo na yan. Now the question is, kailangan ba naman natin si Lord? Kung kailangan niya tayo, kailangan ba natin siya? Let me answer this. Alam mo ba, sa totoo lang, hindi tayo kailangan ni Lord. 
mas kailangan natin siya. I need you next generation, ang sabi ng Panginoon, to serve me. You know why? Because if you are not going to serve me, you are going to serve something else. So the Bible is very clear that the Lord doesn't have a need, but in this scripture, He needs you. That's why para sa akin, mga kapatid, I will serve the Lord. At pinadala ako ni Lord sa araw na ito para sabihin ko sa iyo, campus leader, maglilingkod tayo sa Panginoon at lahat ng inumpisahan niya sa ating buhay, ito ay ating itutuloy. Everybody say amen to that. You know what? Sabi dito, what are you gonna give me? Ano ang ibibigay mo sa akin? Knowing that the Lord doesn't have a need. Pero ang sabi po ng salita ng Panginoon dito sa Matthew 21, I need that cult. Kailangan ko yung asno na yon. At yung mga kapatid, hindi niya sinabi na kailangan ko ng white stallion. Hindi niya sinabi na kailangan ko ng beautiful show horse. Hindi niya sinabi na kailangan ko ng isang malaking kabayo. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid, ang sabi niya, kailangan ko ng asno. Later on, you will understand why the Lord chose a cult. In this most critical moment of Jesus' ministry, makikita natin that He chose an animal. Okay? Na, napakababa. He did not choose a stallion, but He chose a cult because God has a message for us. Meron siyang mensahe. It is the message of humility. So, ang sabi po ng Panginoon, kailangan ko yan. At dahil kailangan ko, ibibigay yan. Listen, campus leaders, kailangan tayo ng Panginoon. You are the cult of this generation. Now, what is a cult? Have you ever asked that question? Ano niyo ba that a cult or a donkey, okay? Ang isang asno is what we call a beast of burden, okay? Beast of burden. And I entitled this message today, Burden Bearers. Last year, if you remember, I talked about pitcher bearers. But right now, I want to talk about the burden bearers. A cult is a burden bearer. In other words, kung titignan po natin ang isang cult, they're like in these third world countries, ano po, sa Haiti, or makikita natin sa Africa, may mga asno na halos sinasakyan, siya, sinasakyan sila at ang daming mga bagay. They were meant and they were designed to carry a load. Meron po akong isang truck, ano? Yan ay sinasakyan ng 200 tanks. Ang tawag ko doon sa, sa truck na yun, si Colt. You know why? Hindi siya na-design para maging sports car at tumakbo na mabilis. Pero na-design siya para magkarga ng mga tanke. A cult was designed to carry a burden or a load. Now, campus leaders, listen to this. Campus leaders are not built by stallions. But campus leaders' revolution is built by people who would take a load and a burden. Kaya mga kapatid, napaka-importante na maintindihan natin Somebody must carry the burden. Para sa akin, dapat magkaroon tayo ng puso para sa mga kaluluwa. Somebody must have the burden for the lost. Alam mo, sa campus mo, sa panahon na ito, ang dami ng mga young people, ang dami ng mga estudyante na nangangailangan ng Panginoon. Nangangailangan sila ng Lord sa buhay nila. Why? Masyad na silang pagod sa mga modules, pagod na sila sa kanilang pag-aaral, computer, sawang-sawa na sila sa harapan ng computer. And you know what? They just need people who are like cult who will carry the burden at sasabihin nila, I'm gonna bring you to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mabigat man ang panahon na ito, but I am going to carry the load because I am a burden bearer. When I see a cult, I see the kinds of people that God can use. Now, I have a statement to make. At nais kong tanggapin mo ito. 
that the greatest blessings come from the greatest burdens that you bear. In other words, the greatest blessing that you can have in your life is our Lord Jesus Christ. Opo, ang ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. Siya ang ating greatest blessing. But the burden that the animal carried nung sumakay ang ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo, of course, He is the blessing to humanity. Ang sabi ni Lord, if I'm gonna enter Jerusalem, if I'm gonna give my life for humanity, I need to ride on this colt. At alam nyo, binuhat nung asno ang ating Panginoon at ang binuhat niya ay hindi isang burden but a blessing. Now, many of us, masyado tayong hayok sa mga blessings. Nasa ng blessing? Nasa ng blessing? Gusto ko ng blessing. But what about the burden? We need to receive the burden in our lives. You know why? Because the greatest blessings in life, they, came, they come out of the heaviest burdens that we carry in life. So lahat ng mga blessings na pwedeng dumali sa buhay mo, they will come out. Yan ay resulta lamang ng mga burdens na ating hinaharap sa buhay. And when we carry that burden, we are carrying a blessing. You cannot separate the blessings from the burden. Magkasama yan, mga kapatid. If you get a burden, the blessings will come. So for me, it doesn't matter. If I am a colt, it's okay na maging isang asno ako. Bakit? I am going to carry the blessings for the whole world. The weight of Jesus on that animal, that was the burden. Pero nice ko sabihin sa inyo that out of that burden, the greatest blessing of the world was given to mankind. And His name is Jesus Christ. Pwede ang palakpakan natin ang ating hari, ang ating Panginoon. Come on, yes, hallelujah. At lahat po ng mga nandito ngayon who are dealing with burdens in your campus. Teacher ka, may burden ka para sa mga estudyante mo. Estudyante ka, nakikita mo ang mga kaklase mo virtually and you know that they have pains in their hearts and you have the burden. I want to encourage you today that the greatest blessings of our lives do not come just out of blessings. But the greatest blessings in life comes from the burdens that we carry. The greater the burden, the greater the blessings in life. Amen. That's why I came by here to say, you know what? Be the cult of this generation. Alam mo ba, kapag binuhat mo yung blessing and you know in your heart that you are carrying that burden in life, of course, the blessing is our Lord Jesus Christ. People will mock you. People will persecute you. Sasabi nila, siya, nagsa-cell group pa siya, alam naman niya na mahirap na ngayon. Bakit nasa cell group pa siya? Bakit naglilid pa siya? Ang dami-dami na nga nating ina-answer na modules. Alam niyo mga kapatid, kung sino ang naglilid ng cell group, siya ang maglilid ng grades. Oo. Ikaw ang makakareceive ng uno. Ikaw ang makakareceive ng star A. You know why? Because you are different. Now this day, I want to give you some things that I feel in my heart that dapat ma-receive natin regarding the cult, how the cult is so significant in this generation and how God qualifies the cult to be used by Him. Okay, I have three words that I want to lay down to you. The first word is the unqualified. The second is the untied. And the third is the unstoppable. Everybody say unqualified, untied, and unstoppable. Now, let me go first in this first part, the unqualified. Did you know that Jesus calls the disqualified? Tinatawag ni Lord yung mga ordinaryong mga estudyante. Tinatawag ni Lord yung mga susunod na henerasyon na napakababa. Listen, the donkey's colt. If you notice, hindi naman siya yung nanay. Siya yung anak. In verse 15 of John chapter 12, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. 
See, your king is coming. Ito ah. Kasi maraming nakaka-misinterpret na akala nila sumakay si Jesus dun sa mother donkey. No. Jesus was seated on a donkey's colt. In other words, bakit kaya hindi yung donkey o yung mother ang ginamit ng Panginoon? Bakit yung bata? Let me answer that. Because donkey's colt speaks for the youth for the campus leaders, and for the next generation. Ikaw yun, kapatid. Estudyante ka lang, but you are a cult. You are going to carry the burden, and the burden will become a blessing to many people. You may be unqualified. Oo. Kasi sa verse 30 ng Luke 19, ang sabi dito, okay, tingnan nyo ito ah, go to the village ahead of you. Remember, nasa gospel ang story na ito. So, I may be in the book of Mark, Luke, or John, but it's the same story. Sabi dito, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. There you go. And I want you to see this. Untie it and bring it here. That colt was untrained. Wala siyang experience unqualified siya, disqualified siya. But listen to me, my friends, it doesn't matter, matter if you are inadequate. It doesn't matter kung hindi ka nag-Bible school. Si Lord pwede kanyang gamitin para makonquer mo ang campus mo. If God will use you, you don't have to know everything. Totoo yun. Hindi mo kailangan na malaman lahat ng mga exegesis, Okay, hindi mo kailangan malaman yung Hebrew, Greek. Ang kailangan mo lang is heart for souls. Reach the souls. Preach the gospel to the souls and engage yourself in winning souls. Kasama na rin ang buong pamilya at ang buong mga estudyante na hinahandle mo. Kung teacher ka, kung ikaw ay, ikaw ay isang cell leader, ang cell group mo sa loob ng campus. Ulitin ko, Kahit wala kang alam, and you, you were never ridden, listen, the people doesn't care kung ano ang alam mo. All they want is that you care for them. You say, I love you. I want to pray for you. And you know what? I've got a relationship to the living person that I am carrying, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yun lang naman ang inahanap nila eh. Alam bakit? Ang mga tao, they are now into religion. Yung mga estudyante, alam nila, mayroong church, but they didn't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus uses and calls the unqualified. Ang kailangan mo lang na masterin, number one, personal evangelism. At pangalawa, dapat ang alam mo ay relational discipleship. Wala ka nang dapat pang masterin. Yun lang, marunong ka mag-evangelism, marunong ka mag-discipleship, and then the Holy Spirit will teach you all truth. He will qualify you, He will train you, He will raise you up, you will become a cult that will carry the burden, but the burden is for the blessing. Number two, the untied. Ano ba na tinatawag ng Panginoon? Yung mga asno na nakatali, and the Lord wants to lose them. In verse 2 of Matthew 21, look at this particular verse. Saying to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Ito yung word, ah, lose them, and bring them to me. Now, I want to give you these two words, lose them and lead them. Salvation is the gift of grace in your life that God has loosed you. Pinakawalan ka ng Panginoon. But listen, hindi ka lang dapat pinakawalan. You're not just supposed to be loosed, but you need to be led. Somebody had to lead him to his purpose. Kailangan merong mag-lead sa kanya. And we don't want sometimes to invite people in our lives to lead us. Listen, in notice new verse, it wasn't Jesus leading that cult. 
it was his disciples. Bakit ayo mong mag-cell group? Bakit ayo mong magpamentor? Bakit ayo mo sa cell leader mo? Bakit binablock mo sila? You know why? Because you're tied. And you can never be loose in your life unless you allow somebody to speak over you. Now, I want you to see this. As long as you are tied to the post, hanggang nakatali ka dyan sa post na yun, the scenario of your life or the scenery never changes. Ano gusto sabihin yan? Kung adik ka, adik ka pa rin hanggang hindi ka pakakawalan at aalis ka sa lugar na yan, hindi magbabago ang atmosphere ng buhay mo. Kung adik ka sa mobile legend, atmosphere mo yan. Kung adik ka sa TikTok, vlog ka ng vlog, ano, nakikipag-compete ka pa, nasa kumo ka na, nag a ka pa, nasa Dota tournament ka pa, nasa talpak ka pa, umu-online, sabong ka pa, alam mo, hanggat hindi ka pinapakawalan at umaalis sa ganyang atmosphere of immorality. Grabe, estudyante ka pa lang, nandiyan ka na sa ganyang klaseng buhay. That unforgiveness in your life. Listen, kung gusto mong makawala sa ganyang klaseng atmosphere, umalis ka sa lugar na yan. Let God lose you and let your cell leader lead you. Come on, my friends. Everybody say amen to that. And thirdly, okay, the unstoppable. This is the positive one that I want to share to you. Jesus is looking not for speed, but God looks for endurance. A donkey is never built or a colt for speed, but it was built to endure. Kahit mabigat ang bubuhatin niya, kahit may burden sa kanyang buhay, siya ay magpapatuloy. And I am believing the reason why Jesus chose the donkey is to teach us that if I am going to use you, I don't want you to be a runner or a what we call quick sprint at yung takbo mo parang 120 kilometers pero in the matter of 3, 4, 5, 6 months hindi na kita makikita muli sa church bakit sa sobrang bilis ng takbo mo I don't need stallions ang sabi ni Lord I need a donkey that is built to carry the burden Hallelujah You know, a few years ago in 2007, 8, and 9, napakabilis ng promotion sa buhay ko when we started the vision here in our church. But God stopped me. Sabi niya, stop. Dahan-dahan ka, Junel. I'm gonna bring you to the stage. Magiging asawa mo si Pastor Amalu and I'm gonna make you endure there first. You know, sometimes si Lord, ayaw niya yung too fast and too soon. He will allow situations in your life na ikaw ay babagal, mabigat ang lahat, but He's doing that so that He will train you and make you the call He wants you to be. Everybody say amen to that. Alam nyo, nafe-feel ko na may mga campus leaders na nandito ngayon. Dahil online ang classes, nahihirapan ka na. It is already a burden. And when time, you know, gets you into a place na parang pagod na pagod ka na, masakit ng mata mo sa computer, you can even meet your, your friends. Let me tell you that it's okay because that burden that you are carrying and as you endure it, it will become a blessing. We may not be like those pretty stallion na tumatakbo at yung show horses na yan, but we are gonna go get there, matatapos natin ito, yung four years mo sa college, yung ilang years ka sa high school na yan, tatapusin mo yan, magkaka-cell group ka, magkaka-12 ka, gagamitin ka ng Panginoon because you are not gonna stop, you will not quit. Everybody shout right now, Delta variant! You cannot stop me from conquering my campus for Jesus. Come on, say those words. Hallelujah. So, let me finish up. The torch race. Alam natin lahat, mga kapatid, yung torch race in Greece is the kind of race that the only way that you are going to win this competition and the athletes is when you are holding that torch burning with fire until the 
end. Now, let me minister to you, campus leaders. Di pwedeng magka-graduate ka ng walang apoy sa buhay mo. The only way that you can win is that when you cross the finish line, dapat your torch is still lighting up. And I am praying that today, the Lord will set you on fire. That my torch, God, will still be burning. God, I'm not gonna die in this season without my torch burning for you. So let me pray right now and let me declare the word of the Lord to you. Lahat ng napagod, lahat ng nangihina ngayon, sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden. I will give you rest. Sabi ni Lord, take my yoke upon you and learn from it. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, I pray for every leader in the campus and potential leaders who are here right now. Lord, kung nahihirapan na sila na nabibigatan na sila because they are the cult of this generation. I pray, Lord, that the burden will become light and the yoke will be easy for them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that saturate them, envelop them by, by your presence right now. Na walang kahit isang estudyante ang mag-give up. But Father, this is my prayer. We are going to cross the finish line and we will say, Lord, our fire is still burning for you. Magtatapos kami, Panginoon, sa COVID-19 na ito, sa pandemic na ito, sa school year ng mga bawat estudyante with the light on fire because God, you are with us. I bless every campus revolutionary. God loves you. You are the cult of this generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. God bless you. At maraming salamat po.